Jai Raja Madhava Kunja Bihari <coughs> Jai Raja Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Om Vishnu Pad Padmahangsa Bhribraja Gacharja Asata Sisri Mahara Divine Grace Abhay Charna Namibhag Shiviranta Swami Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Grantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Jai Gaura Pemanandi All glories to some of the bodies All glories to some of the bodies All glories to some of the bodies All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam <coughs> <clears throat> First Canto, Chapter 10, entitled Departure of Lord Krishna for Dwarka. Text number 13. Sarve te nimishair akshais tam anu Druta Chaita Saha Vikshanta Sneha Sambada Vichelus Tatra Tatra Ham Sarvete Nimisharakshais Sarvete Nimisharakshais Tamanu Dhrutta Chetasa Tamanu Dhrutta Chetasa Vikshantak Sneha Sambada Vikshantak Sneha Sambada Vichelus Tatra Tatraha Vichelus Tatra Tatraha Sarvete Nimisharakshais Tamanu Dhrutta Chaitasa Vikshantak Sneha Sambada Vichelus Tatra Tatraha
ladies. Sarve all te de animishai without twinkling of the eyes akshai by the eye tam anu after him dutta chaitasa melted heart pikshanta looking upon him Sneya Sambadaha Bound by pure affection. Vichelu began to move. Tatra Tatra here and there. Ha so they did. Translation and purport by his divine grace A Sivaktivaranta Sami Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. All their hearts were melting for him on the pot of attraction. They looked at him without blinking their eyes, and they moved hither and thither in perplexity. Please repeat. All their hearts were melting for him <coughs> on the pot of attraction. <coughs> they looked at him without blinking their eyes, and they moved hither and thither in perplexity. Purport. Krishna is naturally attractive for all living beings because he is the chief eternal amongst all eternals. <coughs> he alone is the maintainer of the many eternals. This is stated in the Kata Upanishad. And thus one can obtain permanent peace and prosperity by revival of one's eternal relation with him now forgotten under the spell of Maya, the illusory energy of the Lord. Once this relation is slightly revived, the conditioned soul at once becomes freed from the illusion of material energy and becomes mad after the association of the Lord. <clears throat> this association is made possible not only by personal contact with the Lord, but also by association with his name, fame, form, and quality. Srimad Bhagavatam trains the conditioned soul to this stage of perfection by submissive hearing from the pure devotee. Om Ajnana Tamitanda Shagyananjana Shalakaya Chakshu Mamitam Jaina Tazmai Sigurve Nama Om Guru Deva Chalam Pankam Langai Teginam Kipadam Mandai Sigurum Tamitam all their hearts were melting for him on the pot of attraction. They looked at him without blinking their eyes and they moved hither and thither in perplexity. <coughs> the Srimad Bhagavatam is uh, so poetic. <laughs> it's so nice to, uh, such a wonderful description uh, given by. Uh, Shugadeva Goswami that uh, describes how the residents of Hastinapur uh, were so absorbed in uh, Krishna's um, person in every in every way uh, just like you know, we have a small glimpse of that uh, in the um, mundane world uh, where the uh, there is an attraction between the uh, mother and the child a small glimpse of it uh, 
here, of course, it's on such a um, level that's beyond our um, comprehension, practically, that uh, the residents of Singapore were so uh, in love with uh, Krishna that, uh, uh, practically speaking, uh, they were simply going through the motions uh, of the day. Isn't it? Sometimes we get so absorbed in some, usually it's some problem, uh, that uh, takes our attention to the point where you just go through things uh, throughout the day, but your mind is somewhere else. Um, so here, uh, it's so nicely described how the how their hearts were melting for him in the pot of uh, attraction. And you can just imagine how um, you put uh, a, uh, some butter uh, in a pot or uh, some uh, ice cube, whatever, if you're into ice cubes. Um, but uh, you put a, a little bit of butter in a pot and you see how it uh, melts away. Uh, how it uh, dissolves practically uh, and uh, the whole um, uh, structure practically of that um, cube of uh, butter is uh, melted away, is dissolved and it transforms into something else so it's wonderful to see how the residents here were so absorbed that uh, they were looking at the Lord without even uh, blinking their eyes. And they moved hither and thither in a perplexity. And Srila Prabhupada points out in the purport here that this is possible, only possible, in the uh, person of uh, Krishna. Why? Uh, because, because Krishna is, uh, as Prabhupada points out here, is naturally attractive. Uh, it's not that he has to uh, go through any extra endeavor, uh, like we see in the mundane world. People have to go through extra effort in order to uh, gain some followers. They do so many various things. But Krishna doesn't have to do any of that. He's naturally attractive uh, for all living beings and because he's the chief. And we see that practically, uh, again, in some mundane sense in, the, in this world. Uh, when someone uh, is um, uh, the uh, chief, uh, they naturally become attractive uh, to all others in one sense or another in one way or another. Krishna also was um, attractive uh, and the Krishna book so nicely describes how uh, Krishna was attractive to everyone. Uh, the animals, uh, the demons, uh, the, uh, the devotees, the residents of this place, that place, uh, even the warriors he had to uh, fight, they were all enamored and attracted to uh, Krishna's uh, person. Uh, Lord Brahma describes in the Brahma Samhita that Krishna is so attractive that he's uh, attracting uh, millions of uh, gopis uh, or uh, cupids. Uh, that he's so attractive that uh, even uh, vast numbers, unlimited numbers of cupids are attracted to him. Isn't there a, one very nice pastime in the, uh, in the Bhagavatam, I forget where it's at, if someone could remind me, uh, where I believe it was Nar Narayan, was it Narayan, Nar Narayan who uh, was being tempted by, was it Maya Devi? Indra sent someone. And he manifested uh, celestial beauties 
that were so, so far beyond that uh, the heavenly damsels were embarrassed. Krishna is so beautiful, so attractive, that um, even the most uh, attractive in the mundane world, Cupid, uh, becomes attracted. Madan Mohan, he's so uh, beautiful, he's so attractive, that uh, thousands of Cupids, he's even attracting thousands of Cupids. This is the uh, position of the personality of Godhead. Not only that, but as Prabhupada points out here, he is alone is the maintainer of the many eternals. Nityo nityanam chaitanya chaitananam yovidhati kaman. The Supreme Lord and the living entities are both uh, eternal and they're both cognizant. But there's one Supreme who's uh, supplying all of the necessities uh, for others. Again, that makes Krishna. Uh, supremely attractive when someone can uh, provide everything you need that personality becomes naturally attractive so Krishna is like that that not only is he uh, supremely attractive but he's providing everything uh, for the uh, living beings and um, when that uh, awareness uh, becomes manifest, unfortunately right now, as Prabhupada points out here, uh, the living being, the living entity, has uh, forgotten that uh, relationship. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was uh, discussing with uh, Sanatana Goswami, and he tells him, Krishna Baliya Sejiv Ana, Anadi Bahir Muk, that uh, the living entity since uh, time immemorial uh, has been under the influence of the material energy, has been under its uh, grip since time immemorial. And uh, that um, as a result, uh, the living, uh, the material energy uh, imposes upon the living uh, being uh, various uh, miseries, threefold miseries. Sangsara dhuk. There are so many different difficulties that the living has to, entity has to undergo uh, as a result of his association with uh, this material energy. Uh, unfortunately, um, Due to that association, um, uh, the living being, as Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, that he has to uh, sarvabhu. Uh, what is that? Sarvabhutani samoham. He has to repeatedly uh, go through that um, struggle uh, and has to deal with this. Uh, misery of uh, material life repeatedly which of course is not a natural uh, condition uh, but because of that association uh, with material nature we've uh, been uh, drug into this material world and we're having to undergo so many uh, uh, trials and tribulations uh, so many challenges, uh, but uh, once that relation is slightly revi revived, as Srila Prabhupada points out here, once it's uh, even uh, a teeny bit uh, revived, as we recite in the morning, Srinvata Svakata Krishna Punishravana Kirtana, that by, by that repeated um, recitation and hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam or the by the repeated practice of the basic practices of bhakti yoga that relationship is slightly revived of course uh, one cannot do it uh, uh, by oneself it's not that we can uh, by our own endeavor 
revive that uh, Krishna consciousness, that natural consciousness. Lord Chaitanya again tells uh, Sanatana Goswami that out of Krishna's uh, causeless mercy, he's given us the Vedic literatures. Veda put on. We, uh, some or other by um, Krishna's, again, uh, what a, a wonderful, uh, loving, transcendental personality would do such a thing that out of causeless mercy will help uh, the suffering conditioned souls. We don't find that kind of relationship in the material world where people are willing to uh, give of themselves uh, for those who are suffering. It's, it's, not, it's not there. There always has to be some motive. What kind of, what do I get from that relationship? But a Krishna is not like that. Uh, instead, uh, out of his causeless mercy, he's given us the uh, Vedic literatures. And Prabhupada makes that very nice point here at the end of the purport that uh, such Vedic literatures as Srimad Bhagavatam are there to um, uh, train uh, the conditioned soul. Vidyate hiriyate grantis. That uh, by, uh, by the repetition and by the uh, execution of uh, Krishna consciousness and Krishna conscious activities in a regulated way, the uh, the hard knot which is there in the heart uh, is uh, pierced, and all of the uh, misgivings that are there uh, due to contact with this material nature, they're uh, slowly uh, dissipated. This is the effects of. Uh, practicing the uh, process of uh, Krishna Bhakti. But it takes uh, good association, as Prabhupada points out here. Uh, this association is made possible not only by personal contact with the Lord, but also by association with His name, fame, form, and quality. So there's the uh, Bapu and the Vani, Srila Prabhupada is pointing out here. Just like one can have the uh, personal association uh, of Krishna, as uh, so many uh, fortunate souls were, uh, uh, or one can take the association of uh, Krishna through his uh, words, his uh, vani. Just as we're also given that association uh, through the association of a spiritual master, the vapu is there, or one can take the association of that spiritual master by a divani. And very nicely here, Prabhupada points out that um, this perfection is attained by hearing from the uh, pure devotee. Um, that um, mercy is there. Uh, Krishna is helping, uh, uh, Prabhupada explains in the Bhagavatam that the Lord is helping in uh, three different ways. He's helping through his through the super soul, and he's helping through the Shastra, and he's helping through the pure devotee, the Guru. So in all senses, Krishna is uh, helping the conditioned souls. Uh, and it's just a matter of uh, us being uh, willing to uh, execute. Uh, Maharaj Parikit, uh, in the Bhagavatam, he's speaking to Sukadeva Goswami and he tells him that if one hears the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam regularly uh, and uh, submissively, uh, then the personality of Godhead uh, will appear in the heart within a short time. Uh, and that, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, proof uh, the proof is there, of course, in uh, Maharaj Prakrit himself, but uh, the proof is there in those who uh, take up the process of Krishna consciousness in a very sin sincere way. If we just hear uh, these uh, wonderful conversations, if we hear these uh, the wonderful activities of Krishna, uh, the wonderful activities of his devotees, 
uh, then all of this uh, association, as Prabhupada makes very nicely, this association is made possible not only by the personal, but also by the Lord, uh, Lord's uh, Vani. Uh, by that association, all of those impurities which are um, uh, keeping us from uh, um, experiencing uh, this process, from uh, uh, our sort of dousing our enthusiasm to a uh, practice, uh, those things will uh, slowly uh, dissipate. And uh, the time will come when, uh, just as here, the residents of Astinapore, they were so uh, absorbed and so uh, focused uh, on, their, uh, uh, on the Lord that uh, nothing else was uh, of concern. You can hardly imagine. Uh, going through uh, one's uh, daily activities and the mind is uh, totally absorbed in uh, Krishna's uh, pastimes, uh, Krishna's uh, activities uh, with his devotees, um, his uh, beautiful uh, form. Uh, we can't, uh, we can hardly imagine. But uh, the fact is that uh, it's possible. Uh, if we simply um, uh, sincerely practice and uh, s sincerely execute the uh, basic uh, activities of Krishna consciousness. So we'll end there. Any questions or comments? Yes, bro. Uh, a child might be uh, deformed, blind, and deaf, but uh, his mother will love him as much as a beautiful child. Um, so that's 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 love. It's like it's not it's not out of sens sensory pleasures. But imagine Krishna. It's like uh, the two three year old Krishna with like lotus eyes and bimba lips walking by. It's, it doesn't take much to love that child. Or imagine Krishna entering Mathura. All the women of the city are in the, on the rooftops and uh, they're, they're out of their body, right? So it doesn't take much seeing Krishna and loving him. Um, and we see examples like um, like Putana or uh, Kupja that approach Krishna out of lust, like uh, out of like, they don't approach Krishna in a loving way, but they fall in love with him. Um, and I understand that you can approach Krishna with ulterior motives and you get purified just because you have approached Krishna. But at the same time, uh, we have other examples like uh, the demons uh, who approach Krishna, the same Krishna that others fall in love with him, but they don't see, like uh, they go, for some reason they don't get attracted. So how is it possible that Krishna is the absolute uh, attractive, but it becomes relative for some reason for some people? Well, I would say that Krishna has a plan for every living being, and he has, uh, so not that someone is doing something that's outside of uh, Krishna's plan. Krishna has desires just like you and I, and sometimes he likes to fight, sometimes he likes to play, sometimes he likes to do this or that. So he needs someone to help him in that particular pastime. So it's not that 
uh, whether it's uh, Kamsa or Hiranyakashipu or it was this one or that one, that uh, Krishna did not have uh, a long-term plan uh, to in engage them. We don't know, of course, the history of some uh, quote-unquote demon who may not be attracted to Krishna consciousness and is doing this thing or that thing. We don't know what their what their long-term, uh, what their past may have been or what Krishna has in store for them in the future. But again, uh, Krishna wants, uh, to, he likes to engage in all sorts of pastimes and activities and he needs uh, different living beings, different souls to help him in those particular pastimes. So, um, uh, again, my answer would be that uh, for Krishna's pleasure, uh, so many things are happening, whether it involves the devotees or the demons or the, the aquatics or whatever. Everyone has some, uh, everyone is, as Prabhupada points out here, uh, is being maintained by Krishna. He's, he's the owner and controller uh, in every sense. Uh, so it's not that something is, again, happening outside of uh, his knowledge or outside of his sanctioning. Um, and uh, it's there to uh, purify that soul. It's there to attract uh, those who may be uh, more innocent uh, those who may be uh, on the verge of engaging in devotional service, they hear or they see uh, such wonderful pastimes, they become attracted, or their, their revival of Krishna consciousness, uh, of love for Krishna happens. So um, uh, that would be my answer. Uh, Krishna has a plan for everyone. We may not know it, uh, but uh, he, he's perfectly aware Archita Prabhu, or Tatulit. I'd just like to add that, in addition to what you said, I'd like to add Narada Muni's observation in the seventh canto. Because, uh, Radha Krishna, you were asking about uh, you know people like demons who don't feel love. When they see Krishna, they feel enmity. But Narada Muni praises that enmity. And he said sometimes people are attracted to Krishna out of enmity, and that's even stronger than some ordinary affection. Yeah, we know from the nectar devotion there's different rasas. Everyone, it can be even ghastly or demoniac, whatever. Neutrality. It, it, and it, the, again, there are so many different rasas, but uh, the end is that that living entity is benefited and makes advancement and get, uh, comes closer to Krishna. Hi, Bobo. Thank you for a nice class. Kind of short, but nice. Thank you. <laughs> Radha Krishna's question is actually a very good question. And in addition to what you said, some, as you pointed out, some living entities are sent directly to participate in Krishna's pastime. Like we know Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu, they were thrown directly into the material world to fight Krishna. Others, it's not so clear. Let's go back to uh, Mathura, his example. We have that washerman who worked for Kongsa. Krishna came and said, you know, I want this garment. That. He said, no, nah, get out of here. This is for the king. So Krishna killed him. So apparently he, well, he wasn't attracted. He was more loyal to Kongsa. And then even the ordinary living entities. The point you made about the absolute truth, what makes him absolute is that whatever you're attracted to is coming from him. Everybody's attracted to something. So even if you're not apparently attracted directly to Krishna himself, which is the case for most of us. We're still not directly attracted to Krishna. We still want a car, a house, or this or that. So as Bhajan Ryan puts it very nicely, why be attracted to a boy, a girl, a dog, or a cat? Why not be attracted to Krishna who made all of that? <laughs> so it's all coming from Krishna. So whatever you're attracted to, it's actually Krishna's energy, and that's what makes him the absolute truth. So to wake up and rather than being just attracted to his energy, be attracted to the energetic source. That's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. Actually, we're all attracted to Krishna. We just don't know. We're just in ignorance right now. 
instead our, and in our ignorance we're attracted to money, fame, or this thing or that thing. But actually it's an attraction for Krishna. It's just being misplaced right now. So as Prabhupada points out here, uh, the Bhagavatam um, trains the conditioned soul. By that association we're being trained. Uh, yeah, and I, thanks for a wonderful class. Um, I think as far as devotees are concerned in, in development of attraction, because a lot of times we talk about love and we're reading about that in its particular purport, I, I've always thought that and understood that the, the real conclusion of how to develop love for Krishna is actually by accepting a bona fide spiritual master. And then by accepting a spiritual master, then we learn the methods of, of the process of devotional service. And from that activity of devotional service, then we can genuinely develop attachment for Krishna and actually genuine love. So we see there's a lot of, energy, a lot of uh, living entities and they're attracted to many things. But in the principle of real love, if we're talking about real love, real love is only acquired by the, the association of a pure devotee of the Lord. Otherwise, it can be just speculation. We think that we love, and we think this and we think that. But you can only discriminate that real loving nature when you associate uh, with a pure devotee. You hear the messages of Godhead from a pure devotee. You engage in that service, and then from that service, one develops love. Yeah, now, Prabhupada makes that point in the very last line of the purport, where he says that the Bhagavatam trains the conditioned soul to this stage of perfection by submissive hearing from the pure devotee. So submissive hearing means that we're, we're submitting ourselves to the uh, pure devotee, uh, submitting ourselves in, uh, and taking guidance. So, exactly. We can, we can read the Bhagavatam, but it has to be given by the pure devotee. That, that element has to be there. Thank you, Prabhu, for a nice class. And just to add a little something is that Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam that he is equal to everyone and that uh, he reciprocates according to how we reciprocate with him. So that loving attitude is so important in the, in the devotee, whether we're chanting or dancing or, or uh, serving, distributing books, when whatever service we're doing, that loving attitude towards Krishna. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? Last one. Prem Singh Kirtan. So, <clears throat> we already have this love of God in our heart. And in the spiritual world, uh, we enjoy this love. So, okay, we have free will. And this love for Krishna is the most powerful and um, Krishna is the most attractive. So, how is possible then we can be attracted with something that is less powerful than that love for Krishna, what we already have in the spiritual world? The living being is uh, marginal, as Prabhupada points out here in the purport, that one's eternal relation with him, now forgotten under the spell of Maya. So, we've, it's forgotten at the moment. We're marginal. So that forgetfulness, uh, that can be there. Well, but, but, but why we choose, okay, we are marginal energy, but Krishna is so attractive and we already have this love for him. So why we choose to, how because is possible? Have, because I, I mean, it's marginal the, energy, but that because, means if we... Because you have a little bit of independence. I didn't, I didn't finish. You misuse it. I didn't finish. So if we come back to the spiritual world, that means uh, we can do again, 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 come here. Okay, Prabhupada said, uh, you know, we were burned here, we will remember that we are burned here in the material world. But still, Prabhupada also said some the possibility we can fall again and again and again, many yeah, times. Yeah, that, that possibility is always there. It's just like prasadam. People have a choice. You can either take prasadam or you can go and have something from 
some other strange place. The choice is yours. If you want to you want to eat prasadam and be happy, then it's right over there. But if you don't, you can go over there and have some weird thing. Jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Mm-hmm.